Hello folks. Well first of all I want to thank you for all the amazing support you've given me on my channel. And as many of you know it's become impossible for me to answer all my PMs, the comments and the emails. So please forgive me for that for I'm certainly on your side and I do want to help. And you know, the reason I make these videos, which takes me a lot extra time with the cameras and all when I build a plane, is to hopefully help one or more of you, if you happen to buy one of these planes, or at least that it could, during your building and setup process, help with any questions you have. And if you search my videos for what you're looking for, you'll most certainly find something on the subject you need help with. And if you're looking for my nine helicopter flying tips, just see my profile for the link on my homepage. So when I'm building a model, I'm always going to tell you what is good and what I found bad and what needs attention. So that way you won't have to experiment and hopefully you'll have better luck, especially if you're a beginner. You know, in my case, I just do not simply throw the plane together and go punch a few holes in the sky, do a few figure E's and call them good loops just to show you that I can fly. In marine aviation, a good loop looks like a circle. And you know, my subscribers have always been requesting me to show the internal workings, the installation tips, and the flight balancing procedures when I build a plane. So that way you actually know what you're going to get and how to be successful with it. So let's take a look, because this Meteor is only $109 receiver ready, compared to over $300 for the Habus, etc. And I waited over two months for this plane, and now the temperatures are below zero with lots of snow. But I will still try to fly it for you at the end of this video in the cold. So here we go. Here's what I've found. Good and bad. The Meteor comes with five 9 gram servos installed. It also has a very handy, in my case, removable screw on rudder. I also like the fact that it has a big battery tray. It has a nice removable canopy. Easy removable landing gear. And a nice set of decals. Okay, I decided to use my Spectrum DX6i and also the AR500 receiver. It also came with an extremely potent 3000 kV Outrunner brushless motor and a 70 millimeter ducted fan. I elected to use the 4800 milliamp 4 cell LiPo to add nose weight because this plane is tail heavy. And uh, the, I think the provided 60 amp electronic speed control should handle it fine. In fact, it should handle a 5 cell too, which would be faster for you folks, but with less runtime. And if you don't believe me, ask your physics teacher about that one. Now, I like this clear nose cone protector it came with. That's pretty smart thinking. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to show you what needs definite attention, the design flaws, and how to fix them when you're assembling this machine. That way you'll have perfect success and not be disappointed. First of all, I did not use the glue it came with. I used electric glue. The only thing that has to be glued on anyway is the elevator. Okay, this is very important. When you screw the wing on, you screw the fan on at the same time. It's not glued in. Don't put any drops of glue or anything in there. The reason being, even the wires on the speed control right here will warp the fan and the fan blade will touch. And you can't have that, so make sure about this. The first item of frustration was the connector that came with the speed control. You know, I use Dean's Ultra connectors on all my machines, so it takes extra time for me to hunt down a matching connector just like this and solder it to the battery. So when I decided to use the bigger battery, I went ahead and put on a Dean's Ultra connector as it can handle over 10 amps without melting. I'd like to see the manufacturers of kits like these provide the matching battery connector. I was just lucky I happened to have one. How about you? Upon uh, running my elevator, look at that. That is loose, and uh, now I'm going to have to check everything. I don't like that. Part. Turns out there was no glue on that piece, so you've got to check everything. I tacked it all up with electric glue. Be safe. The next item of frustration was when I tried to screw on the rudder. The little plastic blocks that the screw screw in weren't glued in. 
very easily broken out of there so I had to re-glue all of these with hot melt glue and uh, nothing like being strong and we like it strong then the rudder went on with no problem next we put on the tail clone it wasn't really clear how to do it and there was this clear plastic ring inside what I did was cut slots in the ring so that I could get it inside and then tacked it in with hot melt glue. The next item of frustration was the fact that the battery tray was unglued at the front. So hot melt glue and I used the hottest so it melts in. When you bolt the wing on uh, be very cautious about this connector for the two ailerons because if it isn't down in that hole the wing won't seat properly. Next you want to make sure you connect your rudder and nose wheel steering servos together and the plug is already made for you which is nice. Next it was just a simple matter of putting the decals on and then snapping the uh, landing gear on and balancing the plane and that is the most important part. And let's talk about that right now because it took four flights for me to get this figured out only to find out that there wasn't enough elevator control. Okay to get the high capacity battery in here I had to cut open the bottom of the canopy which is fine because then I had room to put my camera in there where it would stick up and actually look out the canopy. Okay and weighing the plane with the 4800 milliamp battery in it uh, that weighs 516 grams or 1.15 pounds versus the two-thirds pound 2200 the whole weight of the entire plane weighs exactly 1.4 pounds 628 grams their specs say it should, can weigh up to 2.5 pounds so I'm way lighter than uh, the specs Okay, here's some excerpts from the flights, uh, followed by the last flight of the day, which was nice. It's real soft on the elevator. It, uh, it cranks, but uh, not enough elevator. It's just uh, real soft. Look at that. That's all there is. Oh, yeah. You need more. Here we go. Got a crosswind. Oh, that baby cranks. You see, in real flying, if the plane is, say, 100 feet away from you and right in front of you, it isn't that big looking to see from there. Well, the hard part is that flying from any direction after that, it only gets smaller and harder to keep track of. And the faster it goes, the smaller it gets, quickly. You know, it's easier for me to fly the simulators as, you know, you still have to know how to move the sticks the right way, you're still going to crash. But it's a lot easier for these old eyes to see. And uh, by the way, if any of you Aerofly 5.5 owners want to fly online with me, stop by. I'm one of the few flying inverted helicopters, so come fly with me and show me your stuff. Okay, it still feels a little bit soft on the elevator. These are my recommendations for the best results. The CG is exactly as they draw it on the plan where your measurements four inches back from the leading edge. I have my battery exactly four inches ahead of that. Okay, due to the design, they have the rudder servo with a long arm and the elevator servo with a short arm. If you put the rod out, it twists. So what I'm going to do is switch the control horns around 
and make the longer in the back so I get more throw. We've increased the throw, but it's binding because the control horns are hitting the foam. So I'm going to take my hot melt glue gun and I'm melt this foam down a little bit so that I can get more throw without anything binding. Just like they say, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That means where I put the longer arm, I had to cut a hole out so that the servo arm wouldn't bind against the rudder. Put the longer servo arm on there from the rudder servo. Now that's movement. Half rate, so I have a not so much rate on the nose wheel because the nose wheel is too sensitive, but uh, moved it to full throw back here on the rudder, so I still have full rudder. So we're good to go now. All right, let's give it another try. Now I got some elevator. Crosswind. Now we're talking. Here's my tip for knife edge. You point the rudder stick in the same direction the wheels are pointing. Yeah, holds a knife edge. Holding inverted nicely. Well, Dynam has a nice jet here, but I think they need to uh, upgrade their quality control a little bit before they send these things out. Balance it the way I did and increase the throw on your elevator and you'll have a great flying airplane for far less money. Straighten out. Alright, that's way better. <laughs> Alright, crank a mundo. It's snowing, so let's hit that Aerofly simulator and go flying. See you online.